Right, and of course, uh, you're watching Global Today, just to prime you that uh, in Taiwan right now, uh, it has been hit by a 7.4 magnitude earthquake on the eastern coast, the biggest in 25 years, and of course, sparking tsunami warning in Japan. A 7.4 magnitude earthquake uh, rocks Taiwan. That's the current news that uh, is coming to hand right now, just to inform you. Uh, this was a 7.4 magnitude earthquake on the eastern coast, the biggest in 25 years, sparking tsunami uh, warning in Japan. 7.4, I think uh, on the richer scale, uh, 7.2 is the highest? I don't know. Anything this, above this, 7 is very uh, high. It's very high. I mm. think uh, this is uh, on the richer scale, 7.4 mm. is uh, such a, an impactful earthquake happening and so also they are for warning of a tsunami in Japan. That is the current news that uh, is coming to hand right now just to inform you on there as well. And we shall be keeping tabs of that particular story. All right, uh, let's just go back to where we were and uh, still on the president of uh, Senegal, Senegal because he's raising all these uh, issues around us as well that uh, it is high time that we should have a gener generation exit. There is the likes of Babu Owino and Mushomba who are ganging up from different uh, sides of the political divide. And they've come up now with a ground, with a, what they're calling the, the team ground, youthful faces. And they're saying, this is our time right now that we are, we want to be the center who is speaking to the periphery because from, your, from their own assessment and estimation is that uh, the current government is devoid of what is the reality of the ground. So they are not, uh, in concert with what is happening on the ground as well. Professor Masharia? Well, um, it's a good effort. And as politicians, they are allowed to dream things. <laughs> um, you see, they say this team ground is supposed to be independent of the government and the regular side. Eh? Yeah. Although, that is what are they calling themselves for. Since they have no trust in the Azimio and no trust in Kenya Kwanza. So they think that they should be the one and people should trust them. Question that comes up, are they people you can trust? Given their past behavior, are they? It's a lot of questions and it's good to do that. But if they are seeking leadership, it comes, people notice it and they know it when they see it. There are people who can make a lot of noise there that they want to be leaders. And they'll have no traction. Because there is something missing. The, believe, the credibility aspect. And um, if the credibility is not there, it does not matter how much one shouts at the top of the roof that I'm the leader, I'm the leader, or I'm young, I'm old, or whatever it is. There is something that has to resonate with the public. Um, they are just beginning, they are not ro resonating yet. They might, but they are not. Does that mean that they, they have no chance? Yeah, they have a chance. They this uh, talk about um, the new, the youth. Eh? Mm -hmm. We've always had the youth, always. Um, you go down there, and uh, Kenneth, here is a history. you go down the line. Every period there is a youth <laughs> claiming that they are the ones, it's my ti our time. And whenever they say it's our time, uh, there's one person who thinks he should be or she should be, and the other should follow. Eh? <laughs> then you have some quarrels in between. Now, I'm supposed to be the one. No, I'm the one. <laughs> but uh, the real leader comes up due to circumstances mm -hmm. of the moment. And the people say, that's the one. Because he or she rises to the occasion. Now, what has happened in West Africa, I don't want to say Senegal, I want to say Western Africa, because it's a phenomenon across. And um, fire is just a symbol of that phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, his friends, colleagues in Mali, yeah. Niger, Burkina Faso. They are the same age, yeah? roughly. Yeah? Yeah. But they have something in common. They appear to have a vision. And in appearing to have a vision that resonates with the people, not the youth so much, but that vision. 
And that, what is that vision? Rejection of the neo-colonial setup that was inherited with independence. And part of the reason that it was inherited was because of people who took power. Actually, I never fought for independence, except in Guinea and uh, Algeria. Mm -hmm. These people were forced to hear, hear something called independence, sign here. So they ended up committing their countries into perpetual slavery. And what you have going on is now a rebellion against that. Mm -hmm. So you, in, in reality, we are now having a new phase of decolonization. And that phase of decolonization is being led by young people, just as in the olden days, decolonization was also led by what? The young people of the day. So there is nothing that's strange about this thing. It's a, it's a phenomenon that occurs regularly, that each occasion will produce its own heroes, people to spearhead the movement. And right now there is that movement of decolonization of neocolonialism. And it's working, uh, seems, these young people are, seem to be doing it very well because they, they have read. They're not ignorant. Mm -hmm. They have read. They know what has happened before. They know, so they are charting the new path. And I think that's what's happening there. So the election of fire is part. So I think last time we were saying about uh, Nkrumah coming from jail straight into what? Into the, <laughs> into the big house. Yeah? Mm, the house so this guy had just come from jail mm -hmm. about two weeks, three weeks ago. <laughs> And they liked it because they, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And why do they say he's the one? It's because he had shown the qualities that he can deliver, he can do. Mm -hmm. So they said yes. Not because he's young, but because he showed he can do it. He can deliver. He yeah. can deliver. Dr. Wong. Uh, well, um, I really concur with what Mwishmiu and Prof uh, are saying here. Uh, we. we Congratulate President uh, Vai, uh, but as Prof says, uh, it is part of what is looking like a movement around West Africa, uh, build around uh, what, uh, uh, as Prof puts it, some anti-colonial, anti-neocolonial rhetoric, uh, some anti-neocolonial uh, uh, rhetoric uh, around it. Uh, the, the question that remains. Uh, is, uh, yes, uh, these guys are young, but will they have what it takes to really push this agenda of anti-neocolonial uh, 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 sentiments from rhetoric to, to, to actions? Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, African history demonstrates to us that uh, those who have made attempts to do this before, uh, their lives were cut short. Uh, we know the story of Tom Sankara very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we know the story of Patrice Emile Rumumba uh, very well mm -hmm. of the Katanga uh, region. Mm -hmm. uh, closer home here, uh, we know the story of Bio Gama Pinto mm -hmm. and, and how uh, these uh, individuals uh, with a very reformist mindset of wanting to move away uh, from the simple transition uh, from colonialism to neo-colonialism that we witnessed in the 60s, that their lives were cut short. So we need to watch the situation in West Africa very keenly uh, because uh, the, the, the neo-colonialists are not sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, they are aware of what is happening and the economic, political consequences of what is going on in West Africa to their economies back uh, in Europe, uh, in, in the Americas and all that will they be able to survive? That's number one. Number two, uh, you, you know, a, a age is not necessarily an issue. The, the issue will be, will, will these guys have uh, the, the kind of wisdom to appreciate that uh, the energy of uh, youth needs the wisdom that comes with the age to govern a country? Uh, Obama realized that uh, uh, very early. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had the energy, he had the gift of gap, but he needed the old man Joe Biden to gain from the wisdom that comes with the age and the experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, some level of success to his administration, despite the, uh, the cynicism uh, that accompanied his presidency. Mm -hmm.
Uh, are we going to see the same thing in West Africa or is a total combination of those who have been there tried and tested as we have seen elsewhere? Uh, let's come home here. Team Ground. Uh, you, you know, as Prof says, we, we have seen this before. If you remember in the 90s uh, uh, when uh, we were singing Moe Must Go, uh, we had the young tax. Yeah. Uh, you know, Honorable Dinga, Honorable Mwite, Honorable Gitobu, Honorable Rengo. They were young tax of those honorable days. Honorable uh, uh, <laughs> You know. I don't forget. Uh, uh, you, you know. Uh, being beaten against uh, Honorable Matiba, uh, Jeramogi, uh, and, and, and Moy. Uh, what, what did they achieve? They, they, they fell victim of divide and rule, uh, as it were, and the old guards controlled the status quo uh, and handed it over uh, to, to another old man, uh, Honorable Moy Kibaki. Mm -hmm. So what we need to uh, 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 find out is uh, have they realized whether or not they have a moment or they are building on this wave from West Africa. The, the conditions here in Eastern Africa uh, are slightly different. The anti-colonial rhetoric, uh, the anti-neocolonial rhetoric here is not as strong as it is in West Africa. Uh, we, we are gladly calling ourselves here in Kenya Anglophones. Uh, you know, Tanzania, Uganda, the same thing. Uh, uh, and, and the rest of, 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 of the region. Uh, do they have a moment? Because uh, uh, the creation of any leader, leave alone the young, uh, goes with a moment. Obama comes up in the US at the time, uh, uh, you know, he sees the moment. Uh, when the United States was at its lowest in a number of things. And then he gives hope and optimism. Uh, you know, yes, we can type of uh, uh, um, uh, attitude. So we need to look at this situation and ask ourselves, does the, the personal histories of these young leaders uh, give the hope, uh, hope and optimism that can easily create them? Some of them are very, fairly young. Uh, their, their leadership, quote unquote, skills uh, were honed in our institutions of high learning. Uh, what are those records? Uh, can Kenyans trust their country, uh, you know, and their children and their future uh, to their hands? If the answer is no, uh, then they need to go back to the drawing board. Fantastic. All right, uh, I think yeah. we uh, have done a good uh, job on that as well, so we'll just wait to see. But you've not really answered the question of the oil uh, that I'd raised, actually, see, because yeah. that's, they need some policy reforms there. Mm -hmm. They had actually put this particular uh, drilling uh, of this oil on hold. on hold since 2023, but he's been very categorical that that will be something that he's going to give it a premium attention. And we know, of course, they always talk about the curse of, uh, of this resource. The yes. curse of Nigeria. The curse of Nigeria, yes. Yeah, so, it has yeah. a lot of oil and imports its own oil. Ibal. <laughs> Ibal, uh, uh, let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Let's hold our horses. Mm -hmm. We, we have somebody who was outside the establishment who has become the president right now by popular demand and popular movement. Is it because he had a consistent message for the longest or even for the shortest and that people have faith in what this man is able to do? Or is it because people were so tired of the status quo that was there? They were looking for a change and they think this change is going to be the, what's going to deliver them. Let's wait until he assumes office and he has to make certain fundamental decisions. Very, very fundamental decisions. France will not leave him alone. They will try every trick in the book to either bring him down or compromise him and have him scuttle 
the hopes and the desires and the, of the people mm. by, by basically becoming a conformist and being sucked in into this thing. I have, I have a strong feeling that he will, he will be out there and uh, he will risk his life. He will do everything it takes to try and take this country on a new trajectory, which is going to be a, a game changer for the whole continent. Today is not like yesterday. Five years ago, he had no opportunity of doing that. It doesn't matter how noble your, your ideas you have. You didn't have a counterbalance. You did not have a global counterbalance to the West. West had sucked in everybody, China, Russia, Japan, everybody. Today, that is different. The best African leaders were there during this, the, 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 the capitalist, you know, uh, communism or socialist uh, uh, problems, the Cold War. Because you, 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 you pissed off with them, you had an option. You would go to the other side and, 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 and build up. That's why leaders like uh, Syed Barre, and many of them survived for a while, for the, for the longest. And at that time, the East did not have the technology to assist you in even getting your oil out of the ground. They themselves had to depend on the West. Russians, at some stage, had to depend on the West for them to be able to tap into their gas and oil because there was a common, there was a common what do you call, uh, uh, interest uh, of supplying gas to Western Europe uh, at a concessional price, which of course doesn't exist anymore. Today is different. If I were fired, the first thing I'm going to do immediately I get into this thing is to take a trip to Moscow China. and take a trip to China and ask them, what do you have on the table for me? I'm not, I'm not just getting out of uh, France and Europe and the rest of them and coming to you and telling you, okay, have it all. No. I want us to talk as equals. You see what I mean? What do you have differently from what we have been traditionally used to? And I'm sure those countries are going to level up with him. Every country takes care of his interests. Don't be ever cheated. Every single country, the bottom line is their own strategic interest. Yeah. So can we marry these two strategic interests? Can I, can I deliver my people from the poverty that we have been in, from the, all those mismanagements we have been in, from permanent dependence of a colonial master who still believes that he is, we're still their slaves? in which I don't have to turn myself into some kind of a half-slave to you, but on equal terms. And I'm sure the Russians are willing to do that. Bring in that technology, start developing what you call the oil wells, yeah? Using whatever, the number of versions is version 21, in which, you know, it's a, a progressive one, not like the one uh, <laughs> Angola signed with the Americans. Angola is going to be a colony of the Americans for the longest, because they have the oil, they take it away from that, and how much remains to them? Less than 10%. Mm -hmm. And, and that basically is there for only the, 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 the ruling class. You, you get my point? Uh, we're worried about that in Somalia also, because Somalia has got some of the, the highest concentration of blocks with gas and oil. I mean, trillions and trillions. People estimate that to be 10 trillion, more than even that, uh, barrels of oil that's in there. And if you multiply that by 60, then you're talking about something unimaginable. You can't even think about it. In any country where there are resources, there are always problems. The West makes sure that those problems are there. Look at some of Somalia right now. Problems are very started. The president wants to push through th something through the, you know, the throat of everybody. Puntland is already, you know, <laughs> has rebelled yeah, against it. Puntland, yes, yeah. uh, and a number of them might also do the same thing. And the whole thing, again, the chaos might come back. But if I were him, I'll go to the Russians. I'll get them, first of all, have a security apparatus that is independent from the French. I talked to a good friend of mine who is the head of state in one of the African countries. And one time he sat down with a, I'm not going to mention the name, he sat down with a Debbie of a Chad. And he told Ch Debbie, why are you singing the French tunes? And they were having a meal or something like that in the state house. He said, come with me, my brother. He opened up the door. And he said, you see that? Yes. That's a French garrison. <laughs> you get my point? Mm -hmm. If I object them today, tomorrow they'll replace me with somebody else the same way they replaced me with my dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand my point? They'll replace me with somebody else. So 
Can he get that security apparatus and machinery right now and get the Russians to commit themselves, you know, train his own forces, bring in a garrison of the Russians to protect him in the meantime? Because these guys will, can even, you know, do anything that they've done in other countries. There, is, there are serious things that are purely, purely existential that African leaders, imagine African leaders, however noble the ideas they have, they must take serious and they must be able, they must be alive to that reality itself. Nobody is going to. France makes, what, 8 billion out of US dollars every year out of Africa. You think they're going to let go of that, 85 billion? And that's only a preliminary figure. People say it could even be 10 times that. So what I'm trying to say is that he has come in, he came in with the right message, and, and all he needs to do is protect Senegal's resources and exploit Senegal's resources for the benefit of Senegal's. The wealth is there. Every country, in 20, 30 African countries today are wealthy. Look at DRC. Look at DRC. DRC should be the richest country in the world. But it's not there because they will never allow it. The West will never allow it. They need those failed states so they can collect the diamonds and the coltons and, and everything else, of course, with their uh, 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 Jewish, what do you call, uh, <laughs> financiers and capitalists and the rest of them, who control the world, by the way. And if you want to know who controls the world, as he says it, the Illuminati or the Freemasons, wherever they are, they are they, you watch at every Western leader right now when you talk about genocide in Gaza and see how they, they, they literally bow to Netanyahu and say, we are there with you, we're willing to you know, sacrifice everything. It's not because it, it, they don't like it. The public do not like it. But they have no choice because they're controlled. Thank you. The same way that Africans are controlled by Europeans, Europe and the rest of the world and America and all so-called Western countries are uh, controlled by the capitalists in quotes, <laughs> Zionists for that matter. You, you get my point? Right, right. So, so, so there's a lot of things that are happening and uh, he has to be very careful and, and very fast in the manner he never gets through these things thank and you. puts his own protection, first of all, more than anything else in the right place. Right, thank you. Let, let's hear from uh, Mashari as well. Yeah. As uh, We wind up on Senegal. We move also to DRC. I think you flagged up that. I think um, the new president uh, has a few things to learn and to avoid. One, he should not make the mistake of Patrice Lumumba. Yeah. Patrice Lumumba was speaking carelessly yeah. on the immigration day and it cost him his life. Yeah. Yeah? So you need to be careful what you say. You are president. What you say matters. You also need to learn from Nigeria. Now that you're talking about the oil, huh? there was a fellow called Murtala Mohammed. There is an airport named after him in <laughs> Lagos. He tried to reform Nigeria. And he lost his life. And he died. And at that time, the Nigerians were just, you know, he, he was changing the place seriously. Uh, before he knew too long, he was dead. So he needs to know about that. Mm. He needs, as the speaker says, consult with other powers. Protect yourself first. The, um, the Russians, the Chinese, but not surrender to them. Because uh, you can surrender and you lose. Or you can consult and you gain. Yeah. And um, third, know very carefully, very well, the French and the other um, exploiters are not going to leave him alone. They are, they are working overnight to see how they can fix those four countries that are in rebellion. So if he knows all those things, then he's likely to do better and survive and be very careful what he does and does not do and continue to command the respect of his people. Well, I, I, I think to add, uh, Prof, uh, the, the life in, uh, and times he needs to learn from is uh, Tom Sankara's three years yeah. in, in, in Togo. Very reformist-minded, uh, but he was a bit uh, careless in his talk. Very, uh, he needs to learn that. Number two, and the last one, the young man needs to know uh, that uh, it's hope and optimism that gave him the presidency. But he will need more than hope and optimism 
to sustain himself as, 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 as president. So what he does in his foreign policy, that's what Mishmiwa and Prof are saying, is very critical as a first step. Uh, and then that will determine what will, he will do in his internal policy of governing a fairly dilapidated country. Mm -hmm. Right, even as we're talking about uh, Faye, who is the president right now, just a news in is that uh, he has named his ally and uh, Sonko. mentor, that is Osbane Sonko, uh, prime minister, uh, following his inauguration yesterday. This is the latest development as far as uh, his uh, right hand man is concerned. That is uh, the, the letters that we have that President Diomai Fai names ally and mentor Oismane Sonko as the prime minister following his inauguration. And talking of prime minister, you need to look at this picture as well because this is the first uh, female president, uh, prime minister, I should say, of uh, DR Congo. If we just have it in full there, dear Congo president appoints a county's first female prime minister, it says, that is the Democratic Republic of Congo's President Felix Shisekedi. On Monday appointed the country's first ever female prime minister, naming planning minister Judith Suminwa uh, to that role. Her appointment ends week of uncertainty. Shisekedi's inauguration for a second term in January kicks uh, starts a lengthy search for a majority coalition in the National Assembly, a key step before a prime minister could be named and a government formed. The authorities, the authorities face a raft of challenges, including worsening conflict and humanitarian crisis in eastern regions and the management of Congo's considerable mineral wealth. This is uh, the former planning minister. Talking of wealth in Congo, Right, so you also have a wealth of faces. I think she's a good looker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's hear from uh, <laughs> Professor. What are you saying? Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with there's beauty. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with beauty. Yeah. Yes. But let's talk about just that shift of um, the first prime minister, especially in a region where we're talking about gender parity. We're still struggling with the. Uh, gender mainstreaming here in the country. There is uh, a notion right now that, especially in the National Assembly, of affirmative action that we should have 50 mm -hmm. more, uh, you know, women elected in Parliament. So that particular figure also in the National Assembly is, is bound to go up. I think we should begin. Farah Malim, you can tell us more about that. Uh, I'm one person who does not believe in setting aside seats for anybody either the male gender or the female gender or anybody. If you want to really support people, you create an affirmative action. Women in Kenya must be assisted by bringing them up to par. Something like equalization. That equalization doesn't mean, mean that you will, you will set aside seats for them. In my opinion, the best way to go about it is that you give them support, you give them resources, let them compete. And when they compete, uh, there's no doubt about the fact that many of them are going to win, by the way. They've been winning. They've been winning left, right, and center. And, uh, and because right now, what happens? If uh, women have the 47 seats set aside for them, you add another 50, it becomes about 100. And in the next election, 80% of the people who become members of parliament from all those places become women. What do you do? You're going to seek again a matching number for the, for the men? And you say now, because of the gender element, and I say that we must have a third again who are men. And, and, and in the process, then you have to nominate more men or set aside more seats for women, for men. It's not the right thing. In my opinion, what they need is a form of an equalization, which means you give them resources, you give them support, you give them every, and, 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 and basically an affirmative action, a deliberate discrimination to allow them to compete on an equal footing and in the process, many of them are going to become, they're going to, they're going to, to win elections. It's like, just like the universities. There, there was an affirmative action uh, which lowered grades for women and uh, girls in our universities. But today, what's the position? We have more girls in the universities. There are more women. Than there are more women in the universities than there are men. Yeah, but uh, many uh, students. Yes, yeah, so are you going to come up again with another one in which you say, okay, let's give an affirmative action to the men, so let's allow them to balance the thing. Now let's, no, no, you don't do that. Uh, this one, this affirmative action was timed, in my opinion, it should be stopped. 
you get my point. Mm -hmm. We have one for the marginal areas, people who did not get education at the right time, uh, with the rest of the country, the North, the NFD, former NFD, and the rest of them. Even that, in my opinion, should have a, a, a sunset day. Uh, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, and you stop it for good, you, you know what I mean? And say now we have had enough opportunity uh, for you to be basically be able to develop the, the, the facilities in, in, in the North, school facilities. Right now we have a problem because all the teachers run away whenever there's a small uh, bandit attack. They run away. And so students who are in Pokot cannot be expected, or Turkana cannot be expected to compete with students who are in Nairobi or in Kisi or in uh, Kiambu or in Yeri. So give them that opportunity now, affirmative action three, two points, three points, I don't know how many points below, to allow them to have that because they've never had, equal merit can only come if there's equal opportunity. There was no equal opportunity. But that opportunity must be developed. And after a, pe a period of time, you say now the opportunity is available to everybody, let them all compete on equal footing. So, so this business of uh, additional seats, for, I, I, I have not have a problem with that. Uh, as to the, 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 uh, the Prime Minister in uh, 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 DRC. DRC, if I had a parliamentary system and I was a president, I would also go for a woman as a, as a Prime Minister in this country. I can assure you one thing, they are very, very brilliant, hardworking, dedicated uh, women in this country. And when you go to corruption, there's always more women uh, who are straight, or less women who are corrupt. So you are actually in agreement with the president moving forward. Yeah. Uh, if you are running well, for if, a presidential if there's a seat, woman, if there's a woman, the, the woman, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't subscribe to the concept of setting aside a seat for either a woman or a man. But I, cons you know, subscribe to the concept that if she's going to be the best, so be it. And I'm sure there are many women who are going to do way better than men, and who will qualify even to become presidents in the country. Uh, so let's continue. For, go for that. Uh, so if somebody picks them up as a running mate because he sees the material... But don't you think that will be a hard sell? I mean, we've tried it with no, Azimio, no, 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 with no. Mother Karua and uh, no, 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 no. Raila Odinga. You look, you he, tried it, you he, tried it with one. It doesn't mean that you're going to lose. In the U.S., the issue was that uh, blacks would never be president in the U.S. Always assumption was that there would be a Jew before a black and there would be a woman before a black. But Obama came and trashed it all. You know what I mean? He was so good that the American, the whole masses were out for him there. Uh, and and so, so in, my, in my opinion, uh, if, if, uh, if there's going to be a good woman, and I'm sure there are many of them who are going to do way better than the men, uh, and, and she runs for one of these officers and she wins because Kenyans are looking for good leadership now. No Kenyan is looking for a man or a woman. The country has changed. The country is, is different, very, very different from what it was 60 years back. So as long as you have the right message, the right commitment, the right history, the tra right track record, the Kenyans will be willing to, to support you. No longer will Kenyans be supporting somebody on the base of region. By the way, that's gone now. Eh? Mm -hmm. It's no longer going to be on the base of region. It's not going to be on the base of religion. It's not going to be on the base of ethnicity or men or women. It's going to be on who can deliver this country from the state we're in to a better state. You, you, you get my point, to a better state. You'd be surprised. Um, anybody can run. Um, I, Farah could run tomorrow for the presidency of this country, and you'll be surprised how uh, all those uh, uh, historical uh, <laughs> prejudices will disappear. You, you, you understand my point? And people will say, no, he is the right leader, and we'll go behind him, and, and that's, that, that will happen. Uh, somebody has to come who is going to um, grab the message exactly the way Obama grabbed it. But of course, with our own domestic scenario here, right? Talk to the right messages. This country fought for independence, but has never been truly independent for the last 60 years, plus years. All we did is transplant one white, what do you call master, for a black master. Black masters. And, 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 and because the white said, and he, he's, he understands and he understands, well, both of them are historians, uh, by the will of the crown. The native did not have a right to land. Native did not have a right to property or wealth. And, and, and the same way... Native was property. Yeah, native was property. Was chattel, basically, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so then when, when, when we got independence, the idea was that let us emancipate our society so that we spread out that. The children of... Uh, uh, ole, ole, uh, Samoy Ole Koitalel, 
the children of Dead and Kimathi, the children of all those generals who uh, self they call proclaimed generals who fought in the forests of Mount Kenya region, Mar Mar Mariama, Baimungi, and all of them are going to come and enjoy the fruits of Uhuru and they'll take back some of their land. No, they're all scooters, they're all poor. You, you saw the, how the lady died, uh, the, the wife of uh, uh, Mukami. Uh, Mukami. Mukami. And then who are the ones who took over? The home guards. The ones who are protecting the colonial masters are the ones who transplanted them and, and became the new masters. Where is the Tarai family, for example? Let me ask you one thing. Where is the Tarai family? There's quarters somewhere in Rangwe, I'm told. Some, uh, somewhere desolate place, desolate place in, 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 in Lue Nyanza. Yeah. That's where they are. So anybody who comes up with a message right now on a, on a national land policy that is going to make sure that there's a proper land redistribution, and I'm saying this. I know that's one area nobody would want to touch. Redistribution. And that's going to give the rightful rights to Kenyans who deserve better than this. Thank you. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll have the support. You see why, why, why Ruto won last time? It's the hustler, the message of the bottom up, the message of addressing, talking to the people at the bottom. That, that message was powerful. So, so if the right message and is going to come and, and people are going to work, somebody is going to work genuinely towards that and Kenya is able to trust that person and say, take it from me. You could become the president of this country, and everybody will say, that's the message we want. They will not care about the fact that you come from real land, the same way your people now are looking for number two and Aruto, or number two somewhere else, or number one, and say, come, you know, unite the real nation. I mean, those things are, it's, it's history. It's, it's by God, man. It's by God. Right, okay, let's <laughs> For any back. community. Yeah. For any community. Uh, Dr. Mbongi. The, the, the way we talks, uh, it gives me hope uh, that I might become a politician sooner than I, <laughs> I, I, I think. Um, uh, but uh, I, I agree with you, Mishmiwa, but um, our politics, uh, beyond the service of messaging and, and talking about common issues of, 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 of class, uh, we, we need to agree that uh, we galvanize, we mobilize, and organize on ethnic lines. Uh, if, if, if you look at um, uh, what we are calling the Hustler Movement, Kindly, uh, beyond uh, the message of Mamamboga, uh, the Wirubaro person, and, and, and the Boda Boda, uh, everything down here was mobilized on, on ethnic lines. It's an ethnic alliance, if, if you look at it critically. I hope that uh, someday we will get into the level of the optimism that you have that goes beyond uh, the messaging. But in reality, when you scratch the service, we are an overly ethnicized, uh, uh, ethnicized country. I've uh, been to places where the, the first letter of my son uh, decides what I'm going to get or what I'm not going to get. That, that's, that's a reality that we have to contend with. And it has really discouraged, particularly our young people, who are not bound uh, by these uh, uh, ethnic affiliations. Uh, that's number one. Uh, number two, um, I, I, I wrote a paper in uh, analyzing the 1997 elections uh, and focused more uh, on the evolution of the electoral process in, uh, in Kisirand. And, and I said in that paper, and I still believe in it, uh, in what I said, that um, uh, good looks uh, don't hurt in politics. Uh, 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 there are things you can get. And uh, the, 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 the Prime Minister of the Democratic Republic of Congo, kudos. Uh, but uh, it will take more than that. Uh, I, I made that reference when I was talking about the kind of influence uh, that uh, Mwishmi Wangilu enjoyed, mm. particularly in urban centers at the time, uh, to the extent that uh, some of us at that young and impressionistic age, uh, we thought she's going to be the first lady president in, in, in the country. To some people, it almost became real, especially when he was joined by uh, people who constituted her intellectual arm, uh, Professor Anyang uh, You know, we were really moved and thought, good things will come, and we said, Masa uh, Niangilu.
uh, here we are today. Um, the, the, the other one, and the, la the last point I want to make is, um, in, in a continent where patriarchy uh, has been a norm in, in our politics, it, it's a great relief to have uh, female faces, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, because uh, ladies, mothers, have something that men do not have. And uh, I'll tell you for free that some of us will not be sitting here this morning and making the kind of statements we are making without the very strong and important input of our, of our mothers. Uh, at least for once, give them a chance. If they make mistakes, men, we have made more mistakes and made more uh, wars that have killed many more people than ever before. Uh, at least uh, women have a softer heart that will have some kind of, um, uh, you, you, you know, mercy uh, for, for, for the world around us. Uh, so so it, it's a welcome uh, relief, uh, but um, I, I like the caution that uh, Honor Bofara was raising earlier, that um, as, as, as we help the boy, uh, the girl child mm -hmm. to come up, uh, corresponding efforts also needs to be put uh, on the boy child because we seem to be overdoing on the girl child side and forgetting that the boy child needs to be uh, taken care of uh, because uh, uh, the, the two genders uh, go hand in hand. Fantastic. Yeah. I think it was a good point to end up there. I can see uh, here my music is up so we need to just give a Closing remarks. Let's just begin with you, Farah. And I think uh, next Wednesday we're going to dedicate our time to talk about Putland refusing to recognize the uh, federal government after disputed constitutional changes that happened on Saturday. So that will be a topic for next week. But for now, let me have your closing remarks briefly. Um, um, a one-liner. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, well, I, like like you said, we'll have that topic for next week. Uh, well, frankly speaking, I thought Somalia was out of the woods, but it's going to be back in the woods for God knows how many more years again. Uh, that constitutional thing itself was, was it killed, it killed a golden opportunity that was there. And uh, I don't know how much longer we, they will be in that. And I'm worried, I'm, I'm, I'm worried for the worst. Uh, and that also, in a sense, it translates into the region because Somalia now is a member of the East African community. Uh, so you, you, you were looking, we are, we are more or less watching uh, a new round of uh, serious, what do you call, uh, uh, antagonism in Somalia, in Somalia, unless, of course, uh, the current president is, uh, himself uh, makes a turn around and, 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 and comes up with a better idea than what they've just done. Thank you. Right. Mashara Monene, closing remarks? Yeah, Briefly. Okay, okay. Right now, the country is going through some hardships, roughness, very bad. Okay. Like, yeah, Kenya, yes. Whether it's the issue of corruption and uh, fake fertilizers, or the doctors, or whatever it is, or the, ch uh, the churches, it's going through very rough times. But that does not mean that people should lose hope. Yeah, there are better days ahead. Mm -hmm. Especially if people keep on asking rough questions, tough questions. Tough questions. Yeah. Of the president, of the ministers, of everybody. Why, why, why? And um, the people in parliament, like my friend here, Farah, uh, to wake up and not to go and admit in public, I didn't know what I was voting for. <laughs> <laughs> what did we put you there for? <laughs> so you. maybe, Farah, you. your friends <laughs> thank you. should wake up. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Mbongi, your closing remarks? Uh, uh, like uh, Professor Nateria, my teacher, uh, all is not lost, life is difficult. For those of us who have a salary, uh, there's no salary we are talking about right now because of the many deductions that we have. Uh, but all is not uh, lost. Uh, the future looks bright when I look at the young people of, of, of this country. And West Africa has shown the way. Mm -hmm. So there is hope, there is optimism. Right, indeed. There is hope, there is optimism. And uh, you're talking about the pay sleep and uh, you're the one who's uh, mentioned here on this particular forum of pecuniary shame, right? That you don't want to look at uh, your salary because of a pecuniary shame. <laughs> but nonetheless, gentlemen, I really appreciate your input. Uh, very insightful, precise, cogent discussion, uh, especially on societal issues like what we just discussed earlier on that particular judgment from the courts as well. So I want to thank you for your input this morning and also to just uh, 
uh, say thank you to our viewers as well. We have uh, Professor P Peter Kagwanja who is also feeling rough this morning. He could not really show up. So uh, we wish him well as well. Thank you for your valid company on watching Global Today. We'll do it next week, uh, looking at a raft of issues as far as uh, foreign policy, security and diplomacy is concerned. Up next is News Diary.